let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Ugg, Brian Smith. And I'd been a few months trying to figure out what am I going to do with my life. And uh, one afternoon I was sitting in the living room and the sun's streaming through, beautiful afternoon, and I, and I just opened the Dark Side of the Moon album by Pink Floyd. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I'd become, a, I'd heard it, you know, anyway, I put it on and I was listening to this music and, and the words were, were captivating. The second song, I was you know, tired of lying in the sunshine, staying home to watch the rain. You are young and life is long and there is time to kill today. And I thought, that's exactly where I'm at right now. And, uh, but then it went on and it said, and then one day you find ten years have got behind you. No one told you when to run. You missed the starting gun. And, and I just erupted in goosebumps because I knew all my friends had taken off. They were tracking for partnership in the accounting firms or they'd started their own businesses and they were all doing well. And I'd been running on the spot for ten years. And so it was within three days, I was in the office of my friend who was a travel agent and I decided that I was coming to California, I was going to find the next big thing that was going to come back to Australia, I was going to bring it back to Australia. It was a joy to encounter him, you know how sometimes you meet people and there's just that instant genuineness that shows up and that was Brian. Something that is endemic to every single business or movement or any new project that gets started. And I call it, you can't give birth to adults. <laughs> every movement, if you look at the Wall Street Journal and look at every page on the stock exchange, they all started with a conception. Then somebody took action and then it was birthed. Then you go through the worst period of all, which is the infancy. And it just lies there, just like an infant. And no matter how much you prod it or kick it or yell at it, it is not going to go to college. It has to go through the infancy. He was authentic. He is true to himself. He's a true entrepreneur. It made me feel um, that there is, there's hope for, um, for our business. One day I opened up a surf magazine and there was an ad of some people sitting in front of a fire wearing sheepskin boots. And I went, Oh my God, I got goosebumps up my arms, over my back, down my legs. There's no sheepskin boots in America. We had that intuition and for a man to stand up there and admit that that's what he was basing decisions on was just simply amazing. When you start out on a, on a, on a project of any type, uh, as long as you've got momentum, the universe just falls in place. He was a great role model, that's what he was. He was a great role model for us entrepreneurs. And Patty and Jenny um, both uh, went out and they selected a disco that had cameras on the ceilings that was showing the dance action on the floor and then it had big screens all over the place so you could be dancing and looking up at yourself, you know, uh, on the floor. And uh, I remember Jenny was wearing a pair of skin tight white shorts and a halter top and Patty had a little skirt on <laughs> with a halter top. And uh, during the night Patty went into this dance move that went, you know, something like this and then she <laughs> jumped up and the top fell down <laughs> and got caught on camera and they replayed it over and over and over and over for the next Well, next day at the birth it was five deep. <laughs> with guys and, uh, and so Stan and I were there writing orders and so for two days we were swamped in an hour and I finally calculated all the invoices out and I looked at Stan and I said 96,000 <laughs> so in one show two days we wrote more than three times our previous year's sales that's how luck can, can work Brian was a real person it was really um, refreshing to hear someone that had, has such a successful company but just be so down to earth. The company was Thunderwear in, in the windsurfing industry and uh, they'd uh, decided to knock us off and I'm wondering where the hell are they getting their product and I found out when I went to the, the trade show in September 
there in their booth is all of my boots with a different label on them. And my supplier had decided to abandon me and, uh, and I'm going, oh my God. This we couldn't keep boots in our warehouse for like 15 minutes. They were gone. Thugs was stuck with a warehouse full of product and my loyal customer, excuse me, refused to buy. So, so that was, uh, that was a, a, a great testament to, uh, to the loyalty, you know, the customer service that I'd spent many years developing. I think that for the men, to stand up and give him that wholehearted recognition. It's that role modeling thing I was talking about. The fact that he can stand up and be vulnerable is a great role model. You don't have to be this tough macho guy. I know one of my favorite parts is when he kind of choked up because he talked about his loyal customers. That, I right there, that gives me goosebumps. What it does, it empowers you to take charge. Look, every one of those is an action item. It's not a poor me, I'm, I'm screwed, I can't do it, I can't react. Every one of these is invigorating the presence of difficulties. Suddenly you're back in control and you'll find ways to, to, to live your life this way. Okay, how do we do it? We were, we, I was doing swap meets. If I went up to surfing at Malibu, I had a van. I, I had all the full-size run of inventory in the back of the van. I'd open it up and after surfing, I'd, I'd sell boots out of the back of the van. Please believe that I've never looked back on a disaster and not thought that's the best thing that ever happened to me. It's perfect. He used to die every winter, you know, his business. Our business died every summer. And I thought, he's got the, the cash. I need to, need to get out, you know, I, I can't bankroll it myself. And so I walked up to him and he saw me coming and smiled and said, hey, how you doing? And I said, Doug, if ever we're going to do it, now's the time. And within that day, we had the accountants talking to each other, and eventually we uh, sold the company to them and had a you know, fabulous cash exit, and they picked up a brand. And then, you know, with their marketing and their skill, they, they after a little bit of a faltering, when they, you know, which most companies do when they take it over, um, they've grown it tr you know, consistently through great imaging and marketing. Come out. I was this 29-year-old kid, came to California, found an idea, fell in love with it, had passion. You could see how much tenacity I had to stick in through some of these things. For a kid coming from Australia and becoming a part of something that is so endemic in the folklore of America, it really made me feel that I belonged and I'd arrived, that I've had a fantastic journey. I'd finally <laughs> become a part of the American culture. I just sat there and was just in awe that this man was just being so transparent. When he lost the ownership of his business, that, he didn't quit. He, he continued on and that inspired me to continue on in my business. You're all going to be faced with incredible challenges. It doesn't matter if they're small company, medium company, big company. The challenges at the time for every person is huge. It says, in liaison with God or the universe or whoever you want to put in there, Nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible. He's coming from his heart when he's talking about what it's like to actually build a business. Don't think of him as a motivational speaker. Think of him as an aspirational speaker, someone for us to aspire to, a path to follow.